You ever wonder if you can machine aluminum on your router? So if you got the right tools, like a drill bit or an eighth inch end mill, I don't know if you can focus, and you don't mind a huge mess, and you got plenty of WD-40, you might be able to machine aluminum. So before I show you the finished product, uh, I'll go through the instructions on what I did uh, through Fusion, and uh, then we'll see what, it, what came out. Okay, so jumping into Fusion, you can see the, the model here. Uh, this is an imported model that I was, I was given. Uh, so going in, first you'll see that I did a, I first had a facing uh, move in here. I changed that to be adaptive because the material that this is being cut out of is about 3 eighths, or no, 5 eighths inch thick. This is about a uh, half inch. And so instead of facing down multiple times, I decided to helix in and then work my way out and kind of clear out that whole face. After that, we go in there and we clear out the next plateau. Um, you'll see that I, I end up working my way in from top and going down and down and down and down. Uh, each step down is about three millimeters. Uh, you can see here, I think that's, yeah, just two passes. Helixing in, going, working my way out, 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 and then doing it again once more. After that, we work our way into that center hole or counterbore. Helixing in again, and then uh, working our way out. The depth of cut is about three millimeters, as I said. And then step over is about a half a millimeter each. This is all with the same tool, so I expect it's a it's an eighth inch end mill, um, a cheap carbide one. So I expect there not to be very good surface finish everywhere. I'm kind of pushing it too. So the first cut, I'm just trying to see if I can if I can cut something, um, and then we'll go from here. You know, try and improve things if we need to. So after that, we go on to the different uh, counterbore areas. This is one area where I thought I couldn't figure out what I, I what I actually wanted to do and what I did were two different things. Uh, what I actually ended up doing is multiple step downs, about half a millimeter each, and it going in, cutting, and then just doing that over and over and over again and stepping all the way down. What I really wanted to do was similar to the other operations, these pocket operations, whereas I spiral down into some depth and then clear it out. That way I can try and minimize cycle time. Not that cycle time right now is really important. It's just this operation uh, so far, let's see here, machining time. It's about two hours. Look at that, two hours for this. I'd hope it, you know, in a real machine, maybe this is more like a 20 minute cycle time. But this is gonna be a quite a while for sitting here and babysitting this at the machine. So anyways, after clearing out each of these four pockets, and go in there and uh, bore out these, these bolt holes. This is more or less straightforward. And then contour, oh, contour is the outside. So you'll see I, I have tabs here too. I believe we go in the edit, go to yeah, geometry tabs, five millimeter width, uh, tab heights. I don't know, that's I guess an auto generated number. I didn't actually modify that. I know I changed this one. And they're rectangular and they're about an inch apart. And so that just came out to be you know, two on each side. So moving on from there, I am doing a drill, this peck drill, it's typical cycle. Um, nothing too difficult here. You also too, if you're to do this yourself, you'll see that I had the point of the drill coming out on the bottom. 
that is an option you need to select inside of Fusion. I believe that is, where is that? Cycle of time. No, no. Oh, here we go. Drill tip through bottom. That way if you unselect that, you can see it moves. So if you select that, it comes out through the bottom and uh, then you'll get a through hole. <laughs> Not have to go in there and clean out anything. Let's go to okay. And so this is what I found out after, I'm actually recording this after I machined it, machined this part, and I found out what I wanted to do. So it's actually a 3D adaptive clearing and the three millimeter maximum roughing depth. I'll go in there, I'll show you guys. So you got this passes, you go down, maximum roughing step down. This step down from this plane down to here is about four millimeters. So you'll see that there's a big chunk here where it machines out and then it goes down a little bit, tiny bit. That's what, just a one millimeter. Um, also for this, I don't have, I should have, but I don't have any, you know, finishing passes. I should have left stock on radially um, and then cleaned up everything. But again, like I, st I said, I'm, I'm just impatient, really. <laughs> just wanted to try and create this proof of concept to show myself that I could I could machine something on the CNC router, so, so, something aluminum, really. So based on that, I hope you guys learned something. Uh, we'll go on now. We'll, I'll show you the actual footage from machining it, and then we'll review. So now you guys saw what I did in Fusion. Uh, let's go ahead and take this out. Uh, you might have also, oh, there we go. Seen what I could have done better in Fusion. But uh, as you can see, I got some tabs there, holding it in. Uh, what I'm gonna go do now is I'm probably gonna go clean this up and then we'll look at it. So off camera. Gonna cut those tabs off, tap a few holes, and uh, I'll be back. All right, so I don't have the tap that I need, but uh, I broke it free and I cleaned it up a little bit. Of course, you know, first things I should say, it's a router, it's not a mill. Uh, you can definitely see some, you know, the surface finish looks really bad, at least on the camera, but it's not as bad when you, when you touch it. There is a little tiny edge rolled over on all of these. Maybe that could be cleaned up if I did a finish pass, but me being impatient and also having a router to use, it's uh, I just wanted to get it done. done. Uh, you can see here I also I cleaned it up. I don't know how easy it is to see on the camera, but I just took some sandpaper actually in the orbital sander and, and broke this edge 
and cleaned up the back so if you want to fake it till you make it you can make your router look you know semi good I guess have that, that tumbled look you can see it's unfinished over here you know or I guess it's un, unsanded over here and this is sanded so uh, yeah I think uh, you can also see some chatter here or even just tool marks you can see here this is from when it, when it was doing the tabs can definitely use some improvement on tool paths or even there's plenty of stuff that I learned I should probably do this machine like maybe get covers for the linear rails um, maybe mount the the flushing system or the the mist sprayer actually I got it all down here you can see all this stuff regulator stuff's all been sitting down here for a while I actually forgot about it so you use plenty of WD-40 when you're doing this. Uh, I'll probably you know, on the video you probably saw I put feeds and speeds on there. So if you got any other questions, let me know or got any comments. Um, hopefully someday I'll get a real machine, not just this this fake uh, fake mill that I got. But uh, yeah, use Fusion. That's awesome. And uh, make sure you clean up your mess after you're done.